we are recording. Hey, Jeff, how are you today? Good, thanks, Rick. Yourself? I am doing great. I'm even happier today because this is a day when we have our first guest on this show. And I'm extremely excited because I've been uh, watching Tom's videos for a little while now, so I'm quite excited to have him on the show, too. Yeah, we've got a good guy on the show today, and his name is Tom Sinclair. Mm. Hey, Tom, how are you? Good day, gentlemen. Well, I'm glad you had the time to make it. It's, I know it's later your time. We're, we're interrupting your dinner, I think, but um, we appreciate you coming out, and, um, and we're fans. So we like what you do and, and the work you've done, and, and you do a great service to the VidBlaster community, the vMix people, the Wirecast folks, and, and your show, Streaming Idiots, which I actually enjoy a lot. Um, and I keep thinking, man, you're one brave guy. Not only are you not an idiot, you're, you're a very smart person, but... Um, you just go out there and put it out there and do a great show. And so what made you call the show Streaming Idiots? Well, it's, it's, it's all about controlling expectations. Yep. <laughs> you know, if, if people's <laughs> expectations are really low, it's easy to be successful. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and it also is it's time for us to be not so serious. Oh, I agree. And take a lighter look at ourselves and what we're doing. And it's important stuff that we're doing. I mean, people that have a passion mm -hmm. all over the world are able to take their passion to the internet and connect with people everywhere. But we need to we need to see the lighter side of it too. And, yeah, and, and enjoy mm, ourselves. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And I think once you get into it, the bug hits you. It's, uh, it's something. Now that brings up a point. How did you get into streaming video? What made you get into broadcasting? Did you have a background in video or broadcasting before? I have a background as a soccer parent. A soccer parent, okay. <laughs> and in fact, just today, uh, posted the show that we taped on, on Wednesday that, that tells the story. But to give you the story just in a nutshell, um, my boys played soccer, and I was frustrated because I couldn't help them coach because I love the game. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm going to take pictures, put pictures up on a website. Everybody loved it. The school loved it. We were the envy of all the other neighborhood schools. The next step the next year was to do a recorded video. And then somebody said, well, you know, this Sinclair guy, he knows some stuff. Maybe we ought to ask him. They are having a big soccer tournament down on the, on the Gulf of Mexico, and they invited teams from all over, including Oklahoma, and including a team that <laughs> had a girl playing on the team whose dad was a very famous <clears throat> country western singer okay who I, I can't name but nevertheless the guys that were running the tournament came to me and said tom this guy this you know really famous singer his daughter's going to be here but he can't be here is there some way that you can put this on the internet live so he can watch and i said sure no problem didn't have a clue <laughs> I, mean, I mean this is back in 2007 and, you know, who knows what the technology was back yeah, then. Not much. But I found a little <laughs> company somewhere out in Kansas that, uh, that would take the stream from my webcam and rebroadcast it along with the sound from the webcam. So I took a webcam and I duct taped it to a tripod and I took it to the venue and hooked it up to my cell phone through my laptop and we live streamed games all weekend long. I mean, the, the, the little screen on the, the TV was about this big. Hmm. So you could just see little ants running around and you could hear, and, and we were so shy and bashful, we didn't announce anything. We, we didn't have any graphics. We took a clipboard and wrote in a big magic marker the score and then held it up in front of the camera so people could see what the score was. We'd say first half, second half, and hold oh, it up in funny. front of the camera. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how it started. And, and it, was a, it was an instant hit. Nobody had ever seen it before. I mean, keep in mind, we're Alabama. Anything in Alabama uh, can be, you know, 10 years behind California and still cutting edge here. <laughs> so we were the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's really cool. And yep. after that, it just, you know, it was a grease skid with everybody saying, oh, come do this, come do that. And uh, before you knew it, we were streaming, you know, golly, it, when, I think when we quit, we had streamed our 350th soccer match. Wow, that's um, incredible. And it was, it was just a lot of fun and a lot of, you know, you develop, you make a lot of mistakes and you learn a lot in the process. So, so what did you do as a profession before that? Oh, that was just my dad thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just I have a regular job like everybody else. Oh, funny. That's just what I did because yep. I, you know I I wanted to be a part of what was going on with my kids, mm -hmm. and it sort of morphed into something else. That's great. 
That's and absolutely so now great. I do two weekly um, internet TV shows. Uh, you know, my gig is is intended to to be pitched live. Right. And so, you know, it's the live audience that that I love engaging with. And then we we you know record the shows, of course, and and post them to YouTube later. And and mm-hmm. really, that's where most <clears throat> folks get to watch the shows is on YouTube. But it's so much more fun to interact with the live audience. It is. And you don't always get the audiences. That's what we've noticed because it depends when you have your shows, people at work, and it's hard to get a lot of people in in the audience. But when you do, it is more fun. Well, and and we pitched ours so that it's uh, in the evening after supper time in Europe and uh, early in the morning on the the train in Melbourne, Australia, (laughs) and uh, in mid-afternoon here in the States. And that seems to be a good time for a lot of folks. But so, Tom, when you first started, you said with that soccer game, uh, what, uh, when was the first time you went into the Video Blaster software? So, or, or what did you go into after that? What was your first uh, bit of streaming equipment? Great, great question. You know, it, it's funny. Once you, once you discover something like this that you didn't know existed, it's kind of like, okay, what do you call it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, how, how do I search for it on Google? I don't even know what it is. And so for probably 16 months, I searched around saying, there's got to be software that'll do this. And for over a year, I looked and finally, quite by accident, stumbled on VidBlaster and downloaded the free trial and tried it and said, this is amazing. It is. is And VidBlaster is very intuitive software. I mean, if you think it'll do something, it'll do it, probably. And so for me, it was just hand in glove. It fit perfectly, and I was able to master it very quickly. Uh, it was only later that I realized that Wirecast existed at the same time. Right. VMix hadn't quite come about at that point. That was back in 2009. And so I developed a lot of expertise with VidBlaster and was invited into the VidBlaster community as a, as a reseller and also as what they call an MVP. Hmm. So I was able to, to test the new software as it came out and then help folks as they ran into difficulty, you know, as everybody does, um, you know, answering the simple questions like, why can't I plug my camera in? You yeah. know, the USB for my camera <laughs> right. into my computer, why won't it work? Mm-hmm. I've had that question about a thousand times. To, to the more difficult questions, helping somebody yesterday get a, wire, a Blackmagic DeckLink Duo card fired up. Mm. And, I, and he said, you know, how come you can get it to work and I can't get it to work? And I said, it's magic. It remember? is. Black magic. Yeah. And, and I so, see with uh, with your show as well, you even get to the extremes. You even phone your customer, phone the people for support, you're saying. You give them a, a mobile call. Well, uh, you know, anybody that's a customer uh, gets mm. my cell phone number. And mm. so if, if they're in a jam on a Friday night or a Sunday morning or whenever, wherever, uh, if I can take their call, I will. Because that's how I got to, got to find you in the first place, Tom. I was interested in... Uh, uh, doing this type of thing, and I've been friends with Rick for quite some years, and I was looking around for the software and found, of course, a Wirecast, and I wanted to see about the new, then I saw there was a new version coming out, mm-hmm. and whose who's <coughs> stream did I get to see first? Was your one on the Wirecast 6? Yeah, we did a pre-review of Wirecast mm-hmm. 6. Yeah. <laughs> we cheated, yes, yes, but that was a lot uh, of fun. Uh, and I thought it was quite interesting how you did it. With, as they said, it was just uh, talking about it. And with the, but I was quite interested, so you did a, cr- a great job on that one. So well done. Thank you. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks. The check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, so, and so with that, you said, and that's what uh, got me at first. I thought, this video blaster guy, and then I saw this streaming idiots guy, and I thought, Oh, oh, the one in the same. It just took me a little while to associate you, the, the two people together. But uh, I'm quite in, uh, interested with the, you like the video plas- blaster, uh, Wirecast, do you have that? And also the new, uh, that we was talking about vMix earlier. What's, uh, what's your preferred, I assume your preferred choice would be uh, the, uh, the vid blaster? You what know, do it's you really think? funny, Jeff. It's, it's, it's amazing. Each program has got things that I really like about it. If we can only combine them all, right? Oh, but you know, but see that's the beauty of it. You know, what you guys do and what I got what what I guys do, what we guys <laughs> do are similar, but I bet our workflows have some significant differences just based on how we like to do things. 
And mm. so what's a strength in Wirecast for you might be a weakness for me because right. I like to do it differently. I like to do it, you know, the way VidBlaster does it. Mm -hmm. But as a <clears throat> the, the, the that VidBlaster guy show, we started uh, in in July of 2012. <laughs> so we're just over two years in that. And after about a year and a half, I realized, you know what? I'm spending a lot of time talking about stuff that's not VidBlaster. It's cameras, mm. or it's streaming, mm -hmm. or it's CDNs, or capture cards, or whatever. And I really want to focus on VidBlaster, so I decided to spin off a second show where we could talk about all the other stuff. And VidBlaster is part of that, too, as, as streaming software. But it really gave me the, the freedom to, to bring Wirecast and vMix into the mix, and in fact, get signed up as a vMix reseller. So we're, we're working for Martin down in, down in uh, Australia and working on getting the folks at Wirecast to, to let us be resellers too, so that we can help our clients fit their need, whatever their need <clears throat> might be, with the software that lines up best for what they want to do. And, and they're all just different enough that they, they meet different audiences. Oh, yes. The first one I looked at was VidBlaster back when, and I loved it. I love the look, the feel. I still think it has a better look and feel than the other two. Um, it looks great. It, it had a very intuitive front end, but it didn't do well at one thing that we needed badly. We're, we're mo mostly an interview show, so we needed the ability to bring in Skype machines, tie them all together, the desktop presenter. So I found Wirecast, and I went, oh, this is what I need. Desktop presenter. Yep. Yes. That desktop presenter is awesome. They did a great job on that, and, and as a result, that's what we decided to go with. And then, of course, I've, I've been wanting a TriCaster for I don't know how long long. Every every guy I know wants a TriCaster, and then you know, when we finally got it, I was sort of like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, it it took us a lot longer to do things than it did on our Wirecast. Or I don't have VMix. I, I did have a copy at one point of VidBlaster, but uh, it's been a long time. And uh, VMix looks good too. And I think VMix also does kind of the desktop presenter idea. At least something yes. I read about that. Um, th do they have the something similar? Yes, they do. Yes. Okay. Yes. And they have a nice interface. It looks fairly straightforward, different. It's a little different again. Mm -hmm. um, but they have that, that cool audio mixer that they've done, which I liked. Right. That was pretty neat. Uh, they, they took that right out of uh, some of the other hardware we use. I go, you know, that's not bad. Because um, we use a mixer when we go through the, the shows. I've, I've got... I've got here now. I've got a Pro FX 12 from Mackie, but <laughs> the better mixer is the 1220i, which we have. We still have two of them. Unfortunately, they don't work with FireWire on half the machines anymore. No Max, they're gone. You can do Thunderbolt, but it doesn't work quite well. So I went. We're stuck. Here we go again. Technology is outpacing us, and so I keep joking. We've put probably I don't know 75 grand into this whole thing, and haven't made a penny out of it. It's all just labor of love because this is not our real job. This is what we do, kind of passive marketing. But we also enjoy doing the shows, and um, and we've made friends doing this, and it's just a lot of fun. We're going to start marketing it pretty soon and trying to do a little bit more, but it's been a, a good labor of love. Now, Tom, uh, with the the vMix, uh, I'll be quite interested to see when you do get if uh, when with your reselling whether you can sell that to me cheaper than I can get it <laughs> for here in Australia. <laughs> well, uh, no, <laughs> no. Well, it's, it's, it's quite it's f quite funny because a lot of the things are, I'm using this Rode microphone that they make in South Australia in the next state across, but I had to go uh, get it from California to get it a hundred dollars cheaper in California wow. than I can get it here. <laughs> So it's quite strange. Well, that, that's because you guys have kangaroo taxes, and you got to pay for those <laughs> poor little critters. <laughs> No, I see Tom with the uh, with that vMix. It's got uh, you know just about three or four different options you can get, which that really interested me. With the uh, you know the standard definition, the high definition, and a 4K edition, so you're not paying for everything that you don't want. Right? And you need the 4K edition. <laughs> you just need it, Jeff. You you will need it. I know you. Well, I saw that the six hundred and thirty dollars for the four K and three twenty for the HD, but that's what I'm I'm interested in the video blaster that uh, uh, Tom Tom likes so much as well because that's a, a much cheaper alternative. But my problem here, I'm pretty much all Mac, but I do I can't uh, live without a Windows machine. So of course, watching Tom's show, I did download the free uh, vid blaster thing, and it is it is quite a uh, a great 
intuitive interface i thought it was quite easy like after three seconds of having it on the screen i could figure out what it how to sort of do the the standard workings of it plus they have the playlists and they have all the other things that you may Mm. want and they're built in they had that from the beginning about five years ago Mm -hmm. um so it's interesting how the different companies evolve and from what you were saying tom which i I really agree with vmix was coming up with some things that i think put pressure on wirecast to become better so it's Indeed. sort of interesting Indeed. how I love competition. Without competition, we're all just mediocre. I so agree. this is a good thing. Well, and, and you've got folks like like Vidblaster and VMix that have been sort of the first to the party mm-hmm. with, with some, some ideas. Uh, Vidblaster came out with the slow motion instant replay a while back. Hmm. Uh, VMix picked up on that afterwards, but it's just now in Wirecast 6 that it's come out. Right. But, you know... Sometimes being the first one out of the box is not always the best thing. Sometimes it's better to watch how other people mm, implement right. these things right. and what works and what doesn't work and then learn from their mistakes. And you might be a little later to the party. You might have your your community kind of pushing you a little bit more to 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 bring these these features forth. But when you do, they're they're tested and they, and they work well. Now I haven't tried the instant replay in Wirecast six yet. I'm really as a sports guy, I'm really interested in doing that. <clears> it looks like they see how they've implemented and, it. And it looks like they took a real commonsensical approach to it. It looks pretty easy the way they did it. So that's kind of kind of neat. I've only been playing with the Wirecast six now for about two, three days and I'm gonna purchase it probably next week and and I haven't done it yet only because my machine at home is is the Windows one. I'm going to set that one up with Wirecast 6. Then I'll bring it in all ready to go. But um, it looks nice. I mean, they did a pretty good job. There's not a high learning curve. It still looks like the old Wirecast in many ways. And it looks like they just added a couple of nice things. Um, and some and 64-bit makes a difference. That was a big one. That's, well, that's, that's right. As I said, with uh, Stephen uh, Haywood was saying, it's taking full advantage of your machine now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the restrictions a bit before have sort of been lifted and that uh, instant replay uh, I like the fact that you can just you set how long you want depending on the capacity of your, your machine you can say I want it to be a 60 second replay or uh, indefinite but that will slow you slow you down if you've got a slow machine so if you set it for 60 seconds it's not going to impede on your performance too much yeah. it's going to be interesting to watch how different people do it too because um, you know, when I first started out with VidBlaster and they put in instant replay, it was a uh, basically a 30-second rolling buffer, and mm-hmm. you, you could display whatever you wanted to, but it have to, it, it would have to have occurred in the last 30 seconds, and okay. it was full speed hmm. uh, with no audio and no ability to record it. And and even though it had those limitations on it, it was very easy to yep. use. And so one operator that was switching cameras and adding graphics and updating the score could very simply add a replay. What I'm finding is as the replays get uh, more advanced and more complicated, they become more difficult to use. Mm -hmm. So it's the kind of thing where if you're going to use it extensively, it almost has to be a second operator that's dedicated to the slow motion. Right, because it's hard if you're doing all the talking and everything else to then keep track of all the switching you have to do and what replay would look good to put on. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I mean, if you look at professional sports, they've got a van full of about three, four people plus who knows how many on the field and there's one guy directing a lot of it. That's a lot of work. Yes. You know what I really love is the, uh, the, the first downline in football. And people go, how do they do that? It's magic. I go, no, it's actually a van with about 10 computers on it. <laughs> it's a lot of work. They, they literally create a matrix of the whole football field ahead of the game. And, and then they know exactly where to put it. And yet they have all the layers so that the players can have their feet over it. It doesn't go over their feet. That's a lot of processing power for a line. It's amazing. <laughs> Now, uh, Tom, you probably gathered from the short conversation with Rick and I, we like uh, equipment and like spending money on equipment. <laughs> and uh, what interests me <laughs> with you, the video idiot show, I was watching it and he was reviewing a microphone. So, of course, now I want to buy that microphone. I don't need it, but it sounded so good with your review. So what, what sort, what sort of uh, inspires you to say, oh, I'll get this microphone and do a, a review? Jeff, great question. When I first started out, I didn't know anything. And I, mm-hmm. I also didn't know what I didn't know. 
<laughs> and so I would buy things and find out, ah, I'm not buying that again. And I, you know, one of the very first uh, uh, video tours I did of my studio, I included my capture card graveyard of all the <laughs> capture cards uh, that I've purchased over the years, trying to find the sweet spot between function and price yep. that is really cheap but really powerful. And finally realized after going through probably 10 or 12 different no-name capture cards that really I was better off with <laughs> the ones that everybody used. The, the, you know, the, this was back in standard definition days, so it was the Osprey mm -hmm. uh, 450 and 460E and then you know, the Intensity Pro, the Blackmagic uh, Intensity Pro and Decklink series. Um, but what I realized as I went through all of that and also being a reseller and so talking with lots of clients that people were really lost as to where to start. And they didn't need to, to start their own capture card graveyard. There was no sense in that. So I said, you know, I'm going to find the things that, that, that work. They work the first time, and they work every time, and they're pretty bulletproof, and they may be slightly more than cheap in terms of, of price. They may be a little bit more than what you might get for first time out of the box. But like the, uh, the review I did on the, the Audio-Technica ATR2100, you know, that's mm -hmm. a super little mic. In the U.S., it, it retails, uh, you know, I think Amazon's got it for about 60 bucks, and there's actually the same mic but in a different color that's 50 bucks. Yep. That's the ATR2005. Uh, <laughs> and, and I said, you know, these are, this is good stuff I need for folks. So when people call me and say, Tom, where should I start? I'm saying, that's the mic you need. If you're mm -hmm. going to use a mic, that's the mic you, you need. If you're going to use a mixer, Here's my recommendation for a mixer. I've used them. They work. This is how you make them work. Yep. If you want to use software, these are the softwares that I've used. I've used them. I know how to make them work. So they don't have to go through the whole learning process all over again that I went through and make all the mistakes that I made. Now, now Tom, what mic are you on right now? Right now, I'm on the Audio-Technica AT897, which is a shotgun mic. Which okay, is sitting sounds good. Right up here. Yep, sounds good. Actually, I think all three of us are on shotguns today. Okay. I, I feel a bit, uh, bit funny. I watched your show the other night, but I'm sorry, my um, microphone's protruding into the uh, the shot because I know you don't like that. So <laughs> I think mine is too, actually, a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 you know, the whole idea as I was coming up with this show concept was I wanted it to be, hey, it's just you and me talking. Yep. Mm. <clears throat> we're, we're talking about. Well, we do technology. the same thing, Tom. It's you, me, and our mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right. But, you know, the mic's here, but the mic is the mic is not the subject. The mic is just a tool no, for sure. us. And the camera's not the subject. It's, it's a tool for us. And the tool is, and, and the whole idea is that it's our passion that, that we want to communicate. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to let my view, I mean, I'm not wearing a live mic. Um, you know, you, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I do have earbuds in. Right. So I can hear you guys. I don't have speakers and I'm not using the, you know, the, the big muffs. Yep. Um, I want it to be as natural and normal as possible because for somebody just starting, all this stuff that's hanging around is intimidating. You mean I've got to get something that sits here and I've got to wear yep. these and I've got to have all this? Oh, my, I, cannot, I won't be able to do that. Now, we call but that I the cool be. factor, though. <laughs> I'm sorry? We call that the cool factor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is. It is. <clears throat> but, but I must admit, it said shows like yours and, and even Rick's with what he's been doing over the years of uh, pointing people into the right direction with the right equipment. Now I find I buy the right equipment, but still buy too much of it. <laughs> but I'm pleased I'm buying the right <laughs> too much of the right equipment that's uh, that's the right way to say well, instead of the wrong equipment well Je but, jeff and i have something in common we really do like the toys we like the mics and and we have just enough discretionary spending where our you know my wife doesn't totally want to kill me but um you know i've, I've got like 16 17 mics and, and i use about three or four a lot and the other ones i have in case i need them but right you know i right. just have my favorites and and it's funny, some of my favorite mics are the ones I got back in the beginning, like a Rode Broadcaster. or, um, And we also do, here at work, we do a lot of voiceover work. So as a result, we tend to have the better mics just for the voiceover stuff. And if we have people come into the studio or if we do it, and it's fun. But I tell you, you are totally right. You don't have to spend a fortune on a good mic to make it sound good. 
Now, uh, Tom, uh, I hope you don't mind me asking, but do you mind telling us what you do resell, what, what I can get off you? Because I'm more than happy to be wanting to be a customer of yours. So, <laughs> Jeff, as a reseller, I represent right now, I represent VidBlaster and VMix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've had so many people question me about other stuff that I've set up a store on my website that basically is just, you know, Amazon listings. Yeah. And so mm. here it is. You can buy it from Amazon. <coughs> they'll fulfill it. I get an affiliate commission on it, you know, 3 or 4%, whatever if the, the, the commission is. But, uh, but this is the stuff I know works. And you can get it from somebody that we know can fulfill the delivery in a sure. timely fashion. So it's not something that I have to, you know, golly, have I got one on the shelf that I can send you. Now, we'll let Amazon take care of that. I just want to be the person that's bringing the good, reliable information that you can make a good decision. Mm -hmm. What good I purchase. have to do now, I, I look do, shop a bit through Amazon, but a lot of the Amazon will not ship to Australia. So what I do, I order it, ship free to Rick's house, and then I pay $1,500 to fly over there, <laughs> have a holiday, and come back with it. So it would have been much cheaper than paying the $35 for Amazon to deliver it. But, but we love seeing <laughs> you, so keep doing that. Yeah. It, though, yeah, we love yeah. seeing you, though, so keep that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, uh, with, so is, have you got any th exciting things for the future you know, that we've got to look out for on your shows? Anything exciting coming up? Well, now that you've asked, <laughs> we do have a giveaway contest. We do it every year. Um, and we ask folks that are interested in, giving, uh, in getting whatever we're giving away. Um, last year, we gave away uh, VidBlaster. Oh. And we asked folks to take the VidBlaster trial edition they could get free and record a brief podcast, huh. one, two, maybe three minutes, using whatever features in VidBlaster mm -hmm. they could figure out. And w we set those recordings down in front of judges and said, okay, which ones do you like the best and why? And so we awarded the winner a free copy of VidBlaster, and I think we ended up having a tie, a three-way tie for second. So we gave them all a, you know, a, a credit coupon towards an eventual purchase of, of VidBlaster. And so we're going to do that again this winter. Uh, I think we're going to probably do a VidBlaster contest and we're going to do a vMix contest. And so uh, you can get a copy of one or the other if you will mm. enter our contest. Well, you've def I'll tell you what, you've definitely got me as a viewer. I've all, you know, started watching a few lately, but now I'm going to be watching it regularly on a weekly basis. I think you said you go on, was it 3 p.m.? Uh, is it 3 p.m. your time? 3 p.m. Eastern. So I think that's, what, 5 or 6 a.m. <coughs> the following day for you. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, I think about, at the moment about 7 a.m. I think it is in the morning, okay. so... But uh, it's a work day, so I'm sort of at work. That's all. I'll have to watch the recordings. But uh. <laughs> I understand. I have a friend in Melbourne that watches me on the train hmm. on Thursday mornings on his on his iPad. Oh, how funny! <laughs> I suppose I'll have to get my iPad and do that the same. Go into work and watch it just before I start work. It's fun. It you know, there's something with live, and, mm. and you know, nothing wrong with with watching a recorded version, but live, you know. If it happened and it was a screw up, mm -hmm. it just now happened. That's right. <laughs> um, it didn't get you know there wasn't any editing it out. No, and and and, and, and we've had lots it. of those with uh, with things like Skype, where things just don't always work right, or somebody's there and all of a sudden they're talking four seconds or four minutes apart from there. They're not in sync, and oh, there's all sorts of fun Skype issues. Now, have you seen that new product that New Tech came out with called? Um, oh, what is it called? The Skype uh, interview the show? show? No, it's um, it's the YouTube one. I'm sorry, the Skype one. Skype one, yeah. Um, yes. Talk show. Yes. Talk show. Talk show. That looks yes. interesting. It's expensive. It's about four or five grand, but it looks like they'll support at least two to three Skype sessions, and I don't know how they get it to be video broadcast quality, but they said they do. Um, it looks interesting. Have, have you seen that one? I have, and I, you know, I am so much of a cheapskate, Rick. I am waiting for somebody to do a, a web RTC implementation that's, you know, high def. Yeah, sorry, my phone's ringing. <laughs> didn't switch one off. Got a new <coughs> phone and didn't, didn't have the thing switched off. It's gone now. 
<laughs> by, the, by the way, Jeff, I now have the same phone. Ooh. I got the I got the Note Four this week. Now, uh, Tom, I don't know about it, but uh, uh, I started out in this sort of industry uh, with not knowing anybody, and I searched for something and how you do for a product, how you did for your vid blaster, how to do a video, and I did the same thing. And the first person I found online was Rick. And so uh, he's been a very expensive influence on me because <laughs> <laughs> we've got to know each other. We've met each other and then we've started doing I've watched nearly all of his podcasts, but uh, we're, as I said, into the technology and it, I'll, I'll get something new and then he gets, seems to get the same one and he gets something that's really nice and working. And I sometimes tend to get that as well. So it's <laughs> a very infectious uh, thing, the, this technology. It, indeed, it sounds like dangerous friendship. Is yeah. What it sounds like to me. <laughs> well, it's just as well that we're, I'm over here and he's over there. I think we'd be worse if it was in the same country at the same time, all the time. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> you know, and it's funny to think about the folks that you know that we first sort of discover in an industry, and uh, you know, Leah Laporte mm -hmm. is the first one that I really yeah, same aware here of same here, and and you know after after Leo. You know, then there then there was a whole bunch of other folks that were doing the same thing at at a, a lower level. You know, at the second tier, I'd say, and it's it's interesting to watch some of those second tier folks begin to develop some notoriety. You know, Andrew Zarian with the guys from Queens Network mm -hmm. at, in New York, uh, Stephen Haywood with the yep. Tech Buzz mm -hmm. um, there in in Pennsylvania, and to see you know kind of different people beginning to rise up above the pack as they really focus in and, and then seeing you guys, I mean, the West coast doesn't exist for us. And then to have Rick, you know, pop up on my radar and say, Hey, what about this show? And I look out there and you guys are doing amazing things. Um, with a, it's, it's relate cast is what, what that's our channel. Doing. That's what we called it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. So, and Good it's things fun do come from the left coast. There's some things, <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> But it's, it's strange to hear, like as I said, we all seem to have the same things. And like, I'm a bit slower because I started in it a bit later. But I, I started with the the looking at the Leo report and listening to it. The only problem I'm finding now is, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> life's getting into the, in in the way of keeping up with it all because now I've got about twenty or thirty hours of things I want to listen and watch. And so I'm ending up doing that and it, not doing a lot of things else. It's hard. And actually, Jeff's a very good video. Uh, video editor, video videographer. Um, he's a multimedia developer. He does some amazing stuff. I just saw his website the other day and asked him, did you do that in Muse, Adobe Muse? And he went, yes. I go, did you get a template? Nope, did it all by hand. I went, wow. Uh, he does good work. So that's always fun too, watching people grow and just, and you didn't really do this five years ago. No, no. As I said, I had a need. There was, <clears throat> there was just somebody started me off saying uh, something and I watched your show, there's one show, and somebody got on there and said, you know, if you want to do so, you've just got to get out there mm -hmm. and do it. Show them that you can do it, and then you might get a bit of support. Right. So I did, <clears throat> and, and it's a bit like Tom was saying with his show. Just get out there and do it. And he said, if people don't like it, oh, well, go away. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm doing this for the people who are interested in it. And it's good to I like to see people like us doing it that are not the top professionals that of course they're saying this thing it's a, like a real person telling me his opinion about something and and i really that's what i like most about uh tom's show uh, you know i could just sit there and, and listen to him for hours well you know there's another thing we're all cuter than leo laporte <laughs> <laughs> oh well we won't get into that so I, <laughs> well but it's it's <clears throat> what's happened is and leo broke the mold which mm -hmm. thankfully he did early on is it's even though it's a visual medium, it really is the content it is. that is is the king. And if you're bringing mm. good content, you know that's that's key. That's key. And for me, I've tried to pitch what I'm doing at folks that are just starting out. <clears throat> um, and that's and a big helping market. Them overcome those first couple of three hurdles so that they can get going and start doing great things. And what I find is. When, when I have a client that I'm working with, either somebody I've built a custom PC for and put in vMix or, or VidBlaster, or it's somebody that just bought the software, I'm, I'm doing some support with them for the first week, two weeks, you know, maybe in extreme cases a month. And then after that, they're gone. They're doing their thing. <clears throat> they, you know, they've got it. 
enough of it figured out where they're, where they're going to go. And, you know, I might get the occasional phone call, Tom, I've got this kind of obscure thing I want to do. How do you think we can go about doing it? And we can, we can consult on that. But it's just get people started and then, pow, they take off. I mean, mm. I've got people that have called me because they want to do bird watching shows. Mm. They, want to, they want to teach people how to make shoes. They want to do, of course, sports. Uh, a racetrack up in Michigan that had me, you know, contracted with me to build two monster PCs mm. for, so they could do live, high definition video streaming, record it, do instant replay on eight cameras. Nice. And, oh. and, man, it was a great project. Those are fun. Great project. And, Those are fun. And they just, just completed the season. They just closed up the racetrack because it's under snow now or something. Well, you know, it's <laughs> funny you bring that up because when we first started, and this is, you know, I started my research about five and a, a little over five years ago. There was almost nothing. It, it was really hard to find where to start, where to get, what components to really put in. I have my little graveyard of, of stuff too, and it was kind of expensive. And you go, geez, okay, eventually I'm going to get it. And eventually I started finding some people. I, I saw Stephen Haywood. He was doing very mm -hmm. early on Wirecast stuff. And, and he wasn't even that good at it back then. He was really learning. But he was great giving out information. And then there's some kids, these like 10 to 15 year old kids going, how the hell do they do this? Wow. And they were good. And, and eventually you got the names and the brands and you started looking and, but it took a good year to finally figure out exactly what we wanted to do. And then we started building all of our own computers, which sounds like you do too. Um, and now, so I, like I tell my wife, I said, we can build an eight or $10,000 computer for about two grand. And it runs fast. And, and we're building water cooled systems. I mean, water cooling, 100 bucks. That's it. You're water cooled. Uh, and you're building fast chips and everything. Two grand. We got a system that can rival just about anything. In fact, that's what irritated me about the TriCaster when we got it. This thing was noisier than our server room with five, with one NAS, with two NAS systems and three other servers. It was noisier. One little system. That was irritating. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I built quieter systems than that. What's wrong with this picture? And there was only one drive on it. One drive on a video machine. I'm going, uh, but there was room for one extra drive. I'm going, okay, barely, okay. Uh, every one of our systems either has NAS on it or five drives, four drives. And you just go, what am I missing? But anyway, that's me. That's me complaining. Now, now Tom, you uh, were speaking about the uh, computers. Wasn't you, <coughs> was that on a recent show you were saying you have yours in the closet? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So to keep the noise down, I thought that was very uh, inventive. So it's stuck in the col closet to keep the sound down. It's in the closet. Yeah. Good, good idea, because that's a lot of the things you have. All these machines that create such a, a racket, but never at the t always at the times when you don't want them to do. Right. So. Noise I thought, and I'm, heat. Yeah, mm. both fun and, things. And that's that's what I've found is that <clears throat> it doesn't overheat in there. It's got plenty of ventilation. But I've stuffed all sorts of blankets and, and fiberglass insulation board kind of around it to <laughs> absorb a lot of the noise. So that, but the mic that I'm using, this this AT897, it mm -hmm. is a condenser mic, so it right. tends to mm -hmm. pick up oh, sure. all sorts of noise. So my environment has to be really, really quiet. Yeah, and it sounds really good there. Thank you. We it worked sounds a clean. long time. I've got a buddy in North Carolina, Mike Phillips. Maybe you've heard of Mike that does a lot of work with audio and he spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with me helping me get set up you know again one of those folks that that you know kind of popped into my life and popped into my show and and made a major contribution into the the vid blaster guy show early on oh that's like that's like me do you know um uh, mark jensen from newmediagear.com like no. that he was about i don't know seven eight years ago he was doing this newmediagear.com and i would go wow and one day i called him Hi, Mark. And he goes, hey, Rick. And we wound up having a past in common. We were both database guys. We did IT work for years. And, and we just hit it off, became good friends. And I learned a ton. Most of my gear came from him. He goes, no, get this, get that, get that, get this, get that. I was $8,000 in the hole after deal being his friend. You think I'm, I'm expensive, Jeff. He was more <laughs> expensive. Um, <clears throat> but, but, you know, and it, it, one, one thing I love about this, and, and I think, Tom, uh, Tom, you're probably going through the same thing. We made many good friends out of all this. We make good friends. We, we share a lot. And everybody I've met in this industry shares. Nobody says, well, you know, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Everybody wants to share. They want to help you out. That's a good thing. 
I found that to be true. People, people are very well. And again, I think that's part of the the young nature of this industry, mm-hmm. this little sort of niche niche market that we're in. The, yep. the, you know, micro broadcasters or whatever you want to sure. call us. Um, you know, we're at that that pioneer stage. And there's kind of a sense that we're all in this together. It's us against the world. I think the government calls us uh, revolutionary radicals, but that's a different other issue. But <laughs> 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 they're trying hard to block all of whatever we do. But actually, that's the F- FCC. They don't like internet broadcasters at all. It's sort of interesting. Neither they does can't NAB. Regulate them. They, can't they want to regulate us. And, and NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters, they're even worse. You know, it's funny. They have a whole streaming area in NAB. But they're constantly sending out newsletters about how they hate internet broadcasters. You just go, great. We are a threat. We are a threat. We are a threat. Not intentionally. No, it's just people we like just, what we do. We, they, we dilute their audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't Those like people that. People that are really interested in, in learning how to make shoes are <laughs> not going to surf the, <clears throat> the, the TV stations anymore. They're going to go straight to that guy that, that teaches you how to make shoes. Sure, for, for a lot cheaper than what this TV station will cost you. <laughs> And you get to develop a relationship with him. That's true. Yeah. We well, yeah, know, Tom, we, we are at the end of our time. Or we're gonna, I know we can keep on going for quite a while. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, yeah. Tom, where can people um, find you in terms of, uh, do, you, do you ever go to trade shows? Do you give talks? Or are you strictly online? And we've been putting up your website a couple of times throughout the uh, podcast. And how can people get a hold of you? The, the easiest is probably to go to our, our main website, which is easternshorebroadcasting.com. And, and that is, you know, kind of our bricks and mortar home here in Fairhope, Alabama. Okay. And, and, you know, part of that is the Streaming Idiot Show. Part of that is the Vid Blaster Guy Show. And then we, we, we work with local clients in getting them online in, in video as well. And so Eastern Shore Broadcasting, or, and it's as simple as Tom at, at easternshorebroadcasting.com. That's great. So there you heard it, folks. Give him a call. Go to his website. He's got a, a form there for you to input and get in touch with him. And, uh, and I think my phone number's on there, too. So oh, it is? Great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So definitely get, to get a hold of Tom. Don't bug him. <laughs> Just get a hold of him. Be nice to him. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and Tom, hope, hope we, hopefully you can come back on another time. That would be cool. We try, we try to make it painless. Try. We used to have little... Um, uh, cattle prods, but nobody liked them, so we just stopped. We just didn't do that anymore. Oh, I thought you were going to say goodie bags. And I goodie bags, yeah, that would be good, too. Mmm, <laughs> candy. <laughs> My wife was just saying, should we bring in the Halloween candy to the office? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yep, yep, I'm there. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of funny. So anyway, well, Jeff, you know, we didn't play the intro. You know that. Oh, I know that. I was going to so he's been. he's probably show. really getting irritated at me. So what we're going to do is play it at the end with the outro. So... We're going to stop the show. Tom, if you can hold on for about a minute, we'll be right back with you. So if you are watching the show and in the live, there are, there's a button on top and a button on the bottom that says, follow us. So do that. Something magical will happen. We can't tell you what it is, but it is magical. So please follow us. And if you're watching the recording on Vimeo, subscribe. You have to subscribe. That's just the rule. Even if you don't, you have to. And then once a week, you'll get probably a little email saying we're live or we're this or we're that or we have a new show up. So just and give us your feedback. We love hearing from you. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you like it, don't like it or what we should be doing better. And we will see you guys next week on Tech Down Over. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Bye for now.